What we have here is actually a pretty special car. This is a 500E, and this was a collaboration between Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. So these are actually pretty big money cars. These were built in the Porsche factory. You can see the, the flared arches on them. You know, if one drove by you, you wouldn't even look twice at it. But if you know what it is, you know what it is. They regularly go for over 50 grand. So, yep. Half Mercedes, half Porsche. Kind of. Not really. It's really Mercedes, but Porsche built it. You see all these newer GT3s and GT3 RSs here, but you got 996. Is it 996 or 997? GT3. 997 GT3 and a 997 Turbo. And this is more my speed. I personally like the 997 as one of the best 911s. I this is the ones I grew up with. These are the ones I love. And you got the B the BBS E88 wheels on that one and I believe LMs on this one. Yeah, so we got LMs and E88s which are both serious BBS wheels. Um, the E88s are not cheap and they're they're very popular in the M3 circle too. And we got RS2s on that one over the, on the 500E. But uh, these wheels in the M3 circle, they're, they're, they're back ordered for, you know, eight to 10 months and they're like $7,000 a set. So we have another FD here, US spec. And we got the Mazda Speed seat, which you don't see a lot of. And you have the aluminum RX-7 dash vent. Those are notorious for cracking in FDs. Pretty much every FD you'll see has a cracked dash vent because it just, they get so brittle over the years that they just crack. So that's why people put the aluminum pieces in there. And from the looks of it, it has an Apexi uh, Power FC ECU, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I ran in my FD. My car was a 6th gen, it was a 97, so it had a 16-bit ECU. It was kind of hard to find a standalone, so I ended up running the Power FC, and it did me just fine. A little bit of older technology, but it, it does work. One of my favorite AMG cars. This is actually, if I'm not mistaken, the first legitimate AMG between Mercedes and AMG when AMG merged with Mercedes was the C36. This is the first actual AMG car that came out. So these are very cool. Straight six, it was a competitor to the E36 M3. And for a long time, they were really cheap. You used to be able to get them for like three grand. Um, they're still not that expensive. You can still find them for like five grand. Purple. So we have another GTST that was painted in Midnight Purple. This one being Midnight Purple 3. The other one was Midnight Purple 2. So Midnight Purple 2 is a R33 color. Midnight Purple 3 is an R34 color. And 3 has like a flip-flop effect. So you can see kind of goldish in it. But yeah, somebody painted this. Midnight Purple 3. And I've always been a fan of Midnight Purple 2 over 3. But the 3 does not look bad on there. Wow, that's a rarity. An RX-8 that runs. And another yellow 968. So on that plaque on the other 968, it said that they only made 10 of them. So if they only made 10 speed yellow 968s, that means two of them are here. <laughs> what are the odds of that? <laughs> this one happens to be a 968 CS, which means those yellow wheels, color match wheels are factory. So it's a club sport. It's got the factory one piece seats color match backs this was built as a lightweight track day car which i'm surprised that it came with a sunroof being you know built for tracks but it still came with a sunroof really you would think that they'd make a hard top version for helmet you know clearance and lightweight and center of gravity we have a pajero mini here vr2 so it is a turbo it's got this cool bull bar that I've never seen on the bottom. You guys know I've had quite a few Pajero Minis and I love them. Oh my goodness. We have a whole carbon fiber car. The old 306.3 on a set of custom three-piece wheels. That looks awesome. 
That is a good looking car. It looks like it's manual too. I'll be real surprised if that's really a manual. The Alpha is really nice. 914, which looks good in yellow. These were dirt, dirt cheap for a while. You're going for like 1,500 bucks. <laughs> so this is an old Saab. And if I'm not mistaken, it's two-stroke engine. <laughs> so back when a car could have a two-stroker. Yeah. And we got the Lotus Europa that I couldn't fit in if I tried. We have one of my favorite Ferraris, which is the FF. I personally love these. I really, really like these. It's the first all-wheel drive Ferrari, and it's got the carbon ceramic brakes. It's a factory option. Uh, probably 40 grand for that fucking option. Oh, look at this. Toyota Sierra. On the Rays? On the little baby Rays. On the sweet baby Rays? Sweet baby Rays. <laughs> look how cool it is with the gull wing. Yeah, these are very cool little K cars. The auto. Oh, these are considered a K? Actually, I don't know if it's really considered a K car. Yeah, I don't know. I think they might be like a 1.3 liter. Alpina 5 series. And it looks, from the looks of it, it's a real Alpina. It's got the Alpina dash, Alpina wheel, Alpina Recaros. There's a Recaro LX. Recaro LX recovered in Alpinas. Fabric. Yeah, B7 turbo. Very cool car. Very, very cool. You don't see that every day. So here's some cool stuff. We're gonna start BMW Z1. Full plastic body on these. The doors drop down when you open them. Non-US, limited number car. So when you open, yeah, you can actually see on the other side, the door drops down. These are very rare. The BMW Z1. They have an M20 engine. Same engine as a 325 E30 in this. So E30 based car. Then we have a right hand drive Ford Escort RS2000. This is rally car royalty. An Audi Quattro rally car. Like I, I don't know if it's a real one. It's got the Azev wheels on it. It looks awfully real to me. Well, I don't know if it was a remake. But that is a very cool car. Hey, Aunt, how you doing? So we got another Citroen here. This is the second one I've seen today, and we haven't even got to the CVs yet. And a very cool Dino 308 GT. I've always loved the way these look. And then this, not super high up on my vintage Ferraris. So I guess it's a 250 GTE. It's hard to get in because there's so many people around. First off, a Renault, another famous rally car. Engine in the back. Look how gorgeous this is. Jeremy Clarkson said driving this car feels like the V12 is connected to your spine. I remember my first Bugatti. It went into the water. Into the bay. All right, I was just yeah, talking so about this motorcycle here, uh, last night. Actually, we're at capacity. Look, basically said close the little gates. hard to hear so, because I'm right uh, here you, in front. Piston foundation but, uh, here. We talked about them These before. are RZ350s. Uh, we got two of them. The Actually, no, we got one of them. Two of them. Right, so Tom Druitt's here. Tom's a good friend of mine. We did, he, he's the head, of course, of the small car company. We did the air-cooled car so show. That is the same in. motor, essentially, as a Banshee. So you could take these cylinders uh, and put them on a Banshee. 
and make a power valve banshee. Yeah, look at the Pajero. We have fought different schools Ooh. of location. We got, right yeah, we got, we got a Pajero right, right there. The we gotta go check that out. Oh, Honda Trans Alp. This is an import. Someone imported this. I think they did. I don't know. I've never oh, seen English. the V12. No, oh, Riverhead Honda. This is from the U.S. This is a U.S. model. Manufactured in Japan, but it's all in English. Yeah. Yeah, it's in miles per hour. This is a rare bike. I've never seen one for sale. I had one of these when I was about 12 years old, 50 cc. A Honda MB5. Mine lost spark, and I couldn't. Back then, there was no internet, so I could not get the parts, and it sat because I couldn't get spark out of it. We can try spoke rims. Yeah, these are 1982, 1983, 84, I believe. So you guys know I love my supermotos. I've never seen this. A 300L CRF. They must be newer. I'm not up to date on the new bikes. It's got warp nine wheels, so it didn't come as a supermoto, but uh. They're real cool. I didn't know they made a 300. So this is a super cool Land Cruiser. I'd like to do something like this with my Land Cruiser. So this is a legit Pajero. Very, very awesome. Oh, five speed. Five speed? I'm yep. sure it's turbo diesel. I'll, I can tell you in two seconds if it's turbo, turbo diesel. Turbo diesel has the screen. Then it's turbo diesel. This is a little French car that I've talked about a couple times already, called a 2CV. The Citroen 2CV. When these came out, they had something like 12 horsepower. And over the years, they got a little more, but I'm not, this is a 2CV6. So this is a, uh, probably a little, more horsepower maybe 16 but that's cool look at that early french <laughs> stuff you don't see every day here we have a e-type with a hard a hard top e-type with a coupe which is my favorite body style of the e-type and it is a 4.2 this is beautiful enzo ferrari said that the jaguar e-type was the most beautiful car ever made and uh, it's kind of hard to argue with Enzo Ferrari. I love the hardtop coupes, though. An I-4. Hang. A Carrera GT over here. Paul Walker's favorite car. So, look at this. A Koenigsegg. That is wild. This next to like a four million dollar Ferrari. But that is wild. It was a little rotary car. Axton roller skate. That thing is bad. A yellow Turbo S and a yellow 912. That would be a perfect garage right there. I miss owning an R34. Should have never sold it. And uh, I absolutely love these and would like to get one sooner than later. Delta GT4, super cool. Very, very cool car. And I would love to find one. Figaro. <laughs> so we got a little Figaro. That thing is cool. Look how cool that is. Okay, car. Very sweet. All right, so we are heading out from the show. So I will see you guys at the shop. So that is gonna be it for this video, guys. Awesome car show. Like, look at the cars we've seen today. Just millions upon millions upon millions of dollars in cars. Hopefully you guys learned a little something. I do tend to have a lot of car knowledge, 
been doing this for a long time. It basically consumes my life. So I know a lot about cars. I know a lot about a lot of cars. Um, it hasn't gotten me very far in life yet, but hopefully it will pay off one day that I know all this shit. But uh, yeah, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy going to car shows and talking about all these unique cars and uh, you know, just giving you guys a little bit of info on each one. So if you guys like these kind of videos, it is coming to the end of car season. But um, I will look forward to doing them in the future. Um, I'm also thinking about some other video ideas. And uh, let me know if you guys think it's worth pursuing. I was thinking about doing a little series like every Sunday. Telling like a car story. I have a lot of car stories. Like a real lot of car stories from these last 15, 20 years. Building and buying cars. So... I was thinking about doing like car story Sundays and like just sitting there with the camera, you know, like Vinwicky style and telling a car story. So if you guys think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments. Like I'm actually asking you guys to let me know. So if you think that's a good idea, let me know and I will do a series like that. But um, yeah, the M3 pretty much done. Uh, I am going to put a separate video out showing that. I already started a video on that. Um, this car show video is probably going to come out first. But M3 is pretty much done, painted. It's pretty much back together. I got a couple little things to do on the interior, but that's it. But uh, you know the deal, guys. Hit me up on Instagram, MikeG203. If you're not subbed, hit the subscribe button and hit the like comment subscribe you know the deal until the next one guys i will catch you guys on the next one like comment and subscribe peace